Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about building this cart. Uh, this is one of the things that I sell the most of and every time I post a picture on social media about this cart, everyone's interested on how to build it and what it's used for. And today I'm going to show you that. If you're interested in build plans for this cart, I'll have those coming soon. I don't have them finished yet, but you should be able to follow along with this video and build this cart with no problems. If you have any questions about it, just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to reply. All right, we're gonna start out by cutting our first two boards for the top shelf. We're cutting these at 54 and a half inches long. And then we just put the first cut on top of the second board to mark it. These are the only two we're gonna cut right now. And then I'm gonna have to change out to a dado blade to put the dado cuts in these two boards that we just cut. I cut these dados about a half inch in from the bottom and about a half inch into the board. It doesn't really matter uh, what you put this measurement at. It's all up to you how much reveal you want on your top shelf and bottom shelf. I use about a half inch or three quarter. Make sure when you cut these pieces that you put a line on your board to make sure that you don't cut over uh, this board and have a dado cut right here. When you do your second cut, make sure it's a mirror image of the first one. If not, you're gonna end up with two of the same and it won't go together correctly. And now you just have to chisel out up to the line so that your piece of plywood will fit correctly. And I'm drawing 45s on the end. This is where the handle will go. This just adds a decorative detail. All right, now that we have all our pieces cut, we can put this first shelf together and you just put your piece of plywood in the dados. And that this piece here is the front piece where the handle goes. You do not have to cut 45s in it. If you buy your plywood from Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get them to cut it for you. You only need one sheet of plywood for this. Uh, these two shelves, the bottom and the top, are 34 and a half by 48. You'll lay the sheet of plywood down the eight foot long way and have them cut down the center at 34 and a half, and then again at 34 and a half, and then whatever's left over, you cut that in half for these two shelves. I think it ends up being 14 and three quarters or 14 and seven eighths, something like that. And that way it's easier to haul and you don't have to worry about cutting your plywood down. And Lowe's and Home Depot do this for free. I know my store does. Uh, I don't know about all of them. I think most of them have the cut saw for this. So just ask and it'll save you a lot of time and effort. The second shelf is made exactly the same way. You just cut your dados and your 45s and put them together with another sheet of plywood. Now we move on to making the top shelves. They're a little bit smaller. They're about 14 and three quarters by 48. And I cut the uh, trim pieces a little bit smaller. I just take a, a four inch board and cut it in half and make these trim pieces like that. Uh, same way with the dados and same 45 degree angles. You wanna use a sanding pad to soften up the edges like I'm doing here it's to measure for the legs. They're 35 inches long on the front and the wheel legs are 26 inches long. So now we put those on and I square them up with the edge right where the uh, handle piece starts. That way you know they'll be the same on both sides. Uh, make sure you pre-drill these because it will split the wood if you don't. And I'm just using deck screws. And use your square or whatever you have to make sure the board is straight up and down.
When you get to this step, you want to make sure that your screws are in line with the plywood or either you're using a small enough screw that it won't go through. Because if you don't hit the plywood directly in the center, you're going to bust through your plywood either on the top or the bottom and it's going to show and look bad. I got a question for everyone. Do you like pit bulls? This is the most loving dog that I have ever had. His name is JT, and he's just precious. Let me know in the comments what you think about pit bulls. When you cut your two uh, front and back boards for the top shelves and the roof, they're 59 inches long, and I just put a 10 degree angle on the boards to give the roof a slight down slope. Now you want to rip some small pieces to make the roof and I just take a um, four inch board and uh, rip it in half and that gives me two of the pieces and then you have to do it one more time for the other and these small pieces are just 10 degree angles on both sides and they're six inches long. When you get ready to put your top shelves on, you just cut uh, two boards at 12 inches long so you can put them on the front and back like I did here. And this holds the shelf up while you screw it in. And the top shelf I normally do about 10 and a half to 12 inches away from the bottom shelf. You can either put your handle in when you made your first top shelf or you can be done like me and have to take it apart to get the handle on. Now let us spray. And I know everyone doesn't want to watch me paint this entire thing so we will skip over this. The next step is to set up a jig for our roof panels and I just use old pallet wood for these. Uh, pallets are free and you can cut them up to make the roof and i usually do them about seven inches long that way you get an inch hangover on your small six inch boards you cut for the roof the last step is the wagon wheels and I cut out four circles to help beef up the wagon wheels. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. I buy my wheels from Amazon instead of making them because it's just a lot easier that way. It would take way too much time to build these wagon wheels. And I just stained the circles the same color as the wagon wheel. And then we put them on each side with glue and brad nails and then drill through them. And this just helps the wagon wheel from twisting and gives it a little more strength on the cart. I've had a lot more success with the way the cart rolls if you use pins like this on the front and the back. This makes sure that each wheel rolls independently of each other and you can turn the cart easier. Hey, if you stuck with me to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. And if you like this build, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And share with your friends. It really helps the channel. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.